Hi everyone, we're back with our Startups in 60 Second series with a special entry on the innovation ecosystem. I'm here with Peter Cowley, uh, one of the renowned angels who's been investing for decades in the space. And uh, I'd love to get under the skin of what's happening now with the COVID crisis and his thoughts on how startups can manage themselves. Peter, thank you very much for your time. Um, I'd love to get a brief introduction on your background from you of what you did before becoming an angel and how you ended up uh, you know, entering such a specialized investment environment. Yeah, very specialized and great fun. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my background is engineering and computer science at uni, obviously a while ago, as you can tell from the color of my hair, uh, in, uh, and then moving into a corporate life in, for a, company, a software company called Logica, whose the brand is now gone, yeah. uh, for two or three years in, in London, working on industrial electronics and automating and brewery. And I moved out to Germany and joined a small company out there for, you know, just a great place to live in the Alps. Uh, as you can see, this is a, this is actually Pyrenees behind me, not uh, not the Alps. And uh, after a year working for somebody else, I set up my first business. So this was 1981, um, and I've set up another 13 businesses since then. I've either founded or co-founded. So my background is 40 years or so of being an entrepreneur in tech and property because I've built spec built houses and done repos and so on. I should also add I've had 16 years on the boards of a number of charities of seven different charities in various sectors. So I've also got a lot of Go social on. enterprise charitable experience as well. Anyway, so move forward, lots of ups and downs, sold businesses, businesses failed and so on. I've got huge amounts of experience in being an entrepreneur and about you say decades unfortunately decades isn't right it's actually about 12 years since i started investing and so 12 or 13 years and, and that was a somebody i was mentoring i invested in the business we exited quite soon two and a half years for a 17 times multiple which was pretty good the, the mm. amount put in wasn't very high so instead of being house changing it was car changing was the what i got mm. out of it uh, but I, during that process i learned what an angel was and really liked it. what i like doing and i liken this often although i'm old enough to be a grandfather i'm not but i likened it to having help ha handing the grandchild back to the parents i.e., the yeah. founders when i move away and, and help another business so i don't have to be involved in the day-to-day -day business having said that i am actually still got two businesses i own and run one is a tech business which i've That's had right. for 30 years and the other one is a publishing business and this is a plug entrepreneurial plug for a, my book called the invested oh. investor and in fact, there's a second book come out called The Founder to Founder. Sorry about the background there. Um, and this is written by me for angels, but entrepreneurs, three quarters of the people who read it are entrepreneurs. And this is uh, entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. So I've still got those two tech businesses, but I've also built up a portfolio of over 70 startups, which is in the top, you know, 100 people in terms of volume in the UK. Um, and during that price, so I invested in about five or six businesses a year I've invested in. Out of that, I've had eight, eight positive exits and 13 failures. One of the positive exits actually paid back all my investments. So at the present wow. moment with 50 investments, they're all upside. You know, many of those will fail for all kinds of reasons. COVID's not going to help a number of them, but, uh, and it will help others. Uh, so I've done that. Now, on top of that, because I'm sort of a curious chap, I decided to get more involved and look at entrepreneurial ecosystems around the world. Mm -hmm. So I've been to the Valley a few times, Boston, Bangalore, Singapore, et cetera, Estonia, you know, Milan, Berlin, Barcelona, lots of times. And from that, I've got, in, I'm, I'm actually president of the trade body for the whole of Europe for angel right. investing, the European Business Angel Network. I was on the board of the UK BAA. And finally, <laughs> I should say that I've learned everything I have from the Cambridge Angel, which I joined 10 years ago. I was membership secretary for five years. I've been chair for three years. Uh, Cambridge Angels invested 46 million pounds last year. So in angel group terms, we are the equivalent. Uh, in fact, we are, I've just had the figures come through. We're the same size as the whole of Finland in terms of investing. <laughs> Obviously many Amazing. less members, but we are, it's a feedback it's called, and, and the, uh, the chair is a friend and so on so i know the group very well so yeah i've been involved in the sense of angel investing as an entrepreneur and an investor for many years and and I, I i love it i really love spending time with people of your sort of age who are entrepreneurial who i can help and will listen to me and i can watch the journey and i can watch all the mistakes they they, they make and hopefully reduce those number of mistakes on the way to a, a positive outcome 
Brilliant. Um, just had a quick couple of uh, follow up questions. So you mentioned exits. What kind of exits were there? Were there a vast majority of which were trade based or um, where you'd kind of uh, sold on your stake or an IPO? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the majority were definitely trade. So the 100 percent sales. The big one that I was mentioning was a PE transaction where they bought out me as a non exec and they bought out part of the founders. OK. Um, so the, so the, and the values tend to be, which is true in the UK, from, this is from many years experience, the sort of five to 25 million range. Okay. There aren't many investments, I, in fact, none of the, any of my exits have been for more than the 25 million enterprise value at the end. And to find those uh, are very rare in the UK. You know, you might get just a handful or two handfuls a year, yeah. 100 million plus, where it's been a startup journey. So. Fair enough. Great. That was very useful. And finally, can you um, tell us what your ticket size is? Um, so you invest in five to six businesses a year. How much do you usually put down? I don't give that number. That's between me, my wife and the tax man. <laughs> what I give it is in terms of what when I'm asked that question, I give it in terms of what moves needles. So okay. I have a friend who sold a business that he made, uh, let's say it's in the hundreds of millions. So he's obviously going to be investing large amounts because there's no point investing 20K and getting 200K back again because of yeah. 100 million, that's nothing. So I invest in proportionally so that when I get a return, I, I, you know, it has a proportionate effect on my own total wealth. Understood. And, and that's how all angels should work. So angels that say should never you never invest more than 10 or 15 percent of their total investable wealth. That's excluding pension and, and house. And so uh, as it turns out, I've decided to do that. I'm probably more entrepreneurial than many angels. So I've been willing to take higher risks. As it turns out with, you know, now that this a big exit occurred in, in um, actually just before COVID lockdown, okay. <laughs> it was so close, uh, this big exit occurred, I, I've uh, now, now paid back everything anyway. So my, my needle has been moved a long way <laughs> by a single exit. And I've got a number of exits with my portfolio, ones that I believe enough in that will have a material effect, which will add up to more than the exit I've already had. By quite a significant margin so i believe as an asset class i would have done very well but i hope with a hell of a lot of effort into it yeah okay no, that makes a lot of sense um right so what is happening uh with the the state of early stage investment uh in the time of covid we'd love to hear your thoughts so as one can imagine it's full of uncertainty all our lives are uncertain the fact that you're locked down there uh, you know, in London, I'm, I'm here, not actually at my own home. I'm in my partner's home here in Bury St. Edmunds, my, I live in Cambridge. Um, there's just so much uncertainty, this day by day uncertainty. You know, we're watching the other countries and uh, we're, we're deciding how lockdown unwinds, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So, what I'm, so it's not just personal and obviously health worries. It's also financial uncertainty. So what I've noticed, and we're what, six weeks into it in the UK at the moment, is that the rounds that were already being talked about and close to closing are closing. So I've invested more in the last week than I have done for a while because they're just coming to an end. I haven't okay. seen any bad behavior myself in terms of term sheets being pulled, pledges being pulled, legals being ripped up, etc. though I do hear about it happening in London quite a bit. So maybe that's the KMG system behaving a bit better, I just don't know. Okay. So those are the ones that are on the way through and were due to close. The ones that are starting to build up and need new external funding are struggling mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're struggling in getting to know the VCs, etc. because these are the bigger rounds. The ones that, uh, and, and that will continue and we'll wait and see when social distancing is removed and how willing people are to meet together in the same room because that seems to be still pretty key. If you're writing a check for 100 K or 500 K or 5 million, you still, there's no evidence yet that people will do it without a physical meeting yeah. of some form, even yeah. if they have taken hands. Then the, the final stage is the entrepreneurs who haven't started the process of fundraising, although yeah. we're probably working on the business plans until COVID. And now the industry, and it's working really well with Zoom, with angel groups, because pe more people are attending because it's so easy to sit where you are and attend yeah. at the meeting. It's not the same feel. So there's definitely a lot of activity in terms of people looking at deals. But what I'm saying and can't yet justify but i sorry i can't yet prove but can justify is that uh, i don't know if you look to my website petercowley.org but my average time from point of contact to point of close i either check in the bank is 5.2 months so what i'm suggesting is that that will get extended by a number of months yeah. so 
probably the order of eight or nine months at the moment. So if you're looking now, you really shouldn't expect any money. You know, hopefully a bit before Christmas. Obviously, Christmas will get in the way, etc. So just it, it'll take longer. So any entrepreneurs are going to have to continue relying on, you know, savings, uh, job, you know, whatever or whatever they're doing in order to, to. So it's going to take longer. But on top of that, I think the risk appetite for um, tax incentivized angels, which is a lot in the UK. I mean, I do use my tax incentives, but I don't make a decision of investment based on the incentives. Okay. I might not use them, but I do not try, I, I invest based on the people and the right instrument, which may not be EIS to yep. invest in. But because, as you can imagine, I was looking at the share price of your organization, I mean, it's probably MAPS <laughs> and many other organizations, people's value, investable wealth has dropped by 25, yeah. 30%. Yeah. Therefore, they're looking at it and thinking, I would suspect a lot of people are thinking, crikey, I've just lost N million or N hundred thousand. Do I really want to carry on putting stuff into very high risk enterprises at the moment? Is that the right thing to do? And there will be a lot of people suggesting that. The more sophisticated angels of which there are still hundreds of us in the UK, it won't matter. But we will, as it does on my website, I'm not, personally, I'm not looking at investing any new deals until I've sorted out my current portfolio in both of time and money. So I will look at new deals, but I don't know when yet, and it may well be in the autumn now. That doesn't apply to everybody, but I'm just, if you're looking for money, then just be prepared to wait. Also, it's really difficult to price around any longer mm. because of the huge uncertainty, market uncertainty, economy uncertainty, you know, government's going to lots of things. So I think we will find that convertible loans, I, where it's not a price round, but the price is weights will be used more that is a problem with eis it is possible to do it but it's not as easy as pure eis ordinary shares understood that makes a lot of sense from my perspective as well i mean um i have been looking at uh, a couple of deals very recently but the fact that the the stock market has declined so dramatically on a global basis means there's a lot more competing opportunities uh, in the public space versus the private space and of course you still have the option of, of staying liquid in the public space so i can completely appreciate that that is very interesting. Um, do you think on that basis, now is a very good time to start a business? So if we're looking at an eight to nine month lead time before I can get my hands on some potential pre-seed or seed rounds of angel investment, um, it's probably about the right time scale to come up with a, a proper concept, perhaps an NED, some backers, a co-founder. Does that sound about the right timing to you or do you have any other? Well, in terms of time, but, it, but you know, if you're going to start a business at the moment, you need to be fairly certain that the new normal, whatever it is, it, it fits in with that. And in many Very cases, of course, there's wonderful opportunities. So really, if somebody's going to start a business, they should be looking at their crystal ball and trying to work out what's good in the future. Some things clearly won't be. So airline, don't start an airline, for instance, or, <laughs> or hospitality or restaurant. Not that I do any B2C really anyway. So those will all be difficult, but there'll be lots of opportunities. As always, I say, and you, you, you're not an entrepreneur as such, uh, to entrepreneurs, I say, if you can get customer money early, instead of equ equity do, because customer money is non-dilutative. Yeah. It proves product market fit to some extent, or at least initial product market fit. So do that. And of course, it also pays the bills as well in, in, the, in the way that equity does. Of course, you can't do that if you're discovering a new drug or something. You can't. Yeah sell the drug so but so you know get yourself in the end we've got to be in a competition personally as human beings so make sure you're personally comfortable and can wait certainly don't make any assumptions about raising capital quickly and if you do need capital quickly which unfortunately is the case of loss of my portfolio will be later in the year you you will get you know the valuation will be down you, you it's not punishment it's just the way that capitalism works that the risk is higher therefore the, the value is reduced. So, um, no, so I'm not suggesting in any way not starting a business, mm. but don't, you know, the great times of the last few years are over temporarily, but nobody can tell how long that temporarily is. You know, we're not Probably just talking it. about recovery. In my view, we're not talking about much of an economic recovery until into next year, and certainly not this year, and who knows how long whether it'll ever get, the new normal will not be the same as the old normal, there's absolutely certain about that, we'll be doing much more dooms, we'll be going on holiday less, we'll be staying in hotels less, lots of things. But it's when the, the, the economy is recovered to the state where people feel more comfortable, 
and that could take years actually makes sense um so then in that kind of uncertainty and, and market context what are you advising your portfolio to do given that that's your your, your yeah portfolio? well exactly so cash is king cash pays the bills so use obviously use whatever facilities are available that the government is providing so some are furloughing but not that many actually and in fact i don't know if you notice but i think it was only about four million out of the total population have been furloughed which is not you know it's less than 20 percent. so 80 percent or so of people are still working now there'll be some gig workers not not uh, you know on, on zero hour contracts etc in that lot mm. but it's still they're not that many but some of my companies are furloughing not many have managed to get the business loans because not many of them have got revenues enough revenues and certainly not profitable to be able to prove they can repay it and yeah as we've been seeing the banks have been really quite difficult about uh getting that capital out despite mm. government pressure the new one that's coming out on monday the bounce back loan i suspect will be of use to some but you know some of these startups only got revenues in the tens of K. So getting a loan of 15, 20, 30 K, because it's a maximum 25% of revenue is, is you know, doable. The two main routes uh, are, well, are grants. So yeah. R&D tax credits in the UK, because that's coming in and it's not sitting on the balance sheet afterwards, which of course a loan is, and potentially equity. So if we do about the grants, peers at the University of UK, is speeded up and doing all kinds of work to try and get you know some hundreds of millions out so that so obviously my portfolio will be trying to do that the um equity raise yes i mean we will i'm just in, in fact i've just been on the phone to somebody i've just done a video interview i'm sorry an audio interview was one of my portfolio because they're just raising a new round at quite a deep discount in order to bring the money in so there okay. will be that because in the end you know a dead business is no business and if you can have a business that the uh, even if the I mean the end we will always support or rather if I'm close enough to the board to help make this decision we'd always support the entrepreneurs with options or some way of making sure okay. they're motivated to continue the business but of course they dilute previous shareholders down yeah. rounds dilute previous shareholders so shareholders are going to have to make decisions whether they're going to invest or whether they're going to get wiped out so using the government tools very important and I do and and that must say there's a little bit of sort of panic uh, train approaching in tunnel initially from some entrepreneurs mm. but now with five or six weeks into it there seems to be some very very sensible plans in place okay and um i can appreciate your uh, perspective is is very very supportive of, of the startups um is that the case across the other investors that you're, you're seeing across the boardroom and who may have come in and in rounds that you featured in or companies that you've already invested in yeah uh, absolutely i i see no evidence of people not supporting their existing portfolio so and and by that i mean you know not putting capital in where it's needed though again mm. it's pretty early you know we're only a few weeks into this um and and obviously offering time and everything else because I do speak really for Cambridge not for other areas of the country and I, I couldn't comment on whether you know London uh, you know found founders are having the same uh, um, support from their uh, their investors um, but I, I'll come back to what I say that the t time and effort and money for these investors is being spent on current portfolio not on future not on the future por portfolio so no, I, I think the, the investors are behaving very well. Understood. Very good. And we've talked about general themes thus far. Um, is there anything, any, well, any interesting or noteworthy themes that have emerged from your own portfolio of investments? Well, they vary dramatically. I've got one that is called Cambridge Mask. So that's rather doing rather well. I mean, it's probably turning over something like 10x what it was doing last year and making huge profits. I've got um, other, I've got one I'm on the board of which was doing about a five million pound run rate until March the 20, 20th and from March the 24th or whatever, it's doing naught. You know, there's nothing, oh, wow. it, it just hasn't got the ability. So we've had to furlough the staff, furlough the production staff, but we, because it's harder business, but not yeah. the, all the tech and sales are still continuing. I've got another one where they've, there's about 80 people in the company, they've all gone virtual and it's actually working much better. The, 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 we have we spend many hundreds of thousands a year on renting a place on the Thames by the Thames, and we yep. may get rid of that. You know, we may 
reduce it to a small office and people working from home. There tend to be people of your sort of age, sort of in their thirties, mm -hmm. who um, are, are okay working from home. You know, it's a bit of a problem. You've got kids, but once the kids back at school, that's as great as okay. Um, I haven't, we've got some that use labs which they can't get into now, so that's obviously slowing stuff down. Um, so it, it varies across the whole portfolio. There are a number that are doing stuff in the COVID space um, specifically, but I don't think anybody is, um, I mean, unlike I've heard in China, there's a lot of mass manufacturers there that are push their prices right up. So sort of effectively um, mm -hmm. taking too much advantage of, of the situation. I don't yep. see many of my portfolio working specifically on COVID. And of course, it's difficult to know you know what what there's no point in throwing like the wet ventilators you know if you saw the story in, in yeah. the big d that dyson and some was it formula one or whatever was put together put the ventilator in place wasn't needed there's yeah. not much point in trying to cope with a peak demand of something which we seem to be open now anyway in yeah. the uk at least for this wave maybe not on the next wave uh the uh just fighting hard to get something out soon because you can't so then if it's going to be covid related is it covid 20 related or 21 or 22 because unfortunately it does appear that the globe may be have to be get used to the idea of having another pandemic we will be so much better prepared for the next yeah. year the way that the koreans have been prepared and so on paris and the chinese of course yeah. the west will be better but i do suspect we will be wearing masks somewhere in the west um in the way they do in the east so Gosh, um, I think we've we've reached the the end of my scripted questions. Do you have any general advice that you'd like to give out to the entrepreneurial community at, at this point um, to help survive COVID, or um, what you believe they need to adapt to in terms of the market environment coming out of the crisis? Well, the companies that are already in existence, the most important thing of all is to take care of your staff in whatever way you can do. So okay. they're making sure got the right working environment making sure that they're motivated making sure they're interacting etc um the, once the lockdown comes down you know comes off the top of where we are now there will be the ability to be in offices together but there'll still be a lot of remote working and in many companies remote working will be the way of the future so it's staff welfare by far the most important to start with followed very closely by making sure you've got enough cash <laughs> to survive yep. where survival depends on a number of factors you don't know about so in other words reduced costs a lot of most companies have reduced um, salaries of particularly the senior people yeah. um, uh, they furloughed where, where appropriate so cash is the next thing if it's a new business as i said earlier just be patient just you know don't assume the worst don't lose the dream and the, and the vision and the passion but just be patient and don't blame the investors i mean it's always bad if we don't communicate well but don't blame them if it seems to be dragging on um and those are the main things aren't they welfare welfare of human beings welfare of businesses and uh, and you know patience and, and, and passion as, as, as all entrepreneurs are. Of course. Brilliant. Peter Cowley, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. And um, I hope that was useful for everyone watching. Thank you. Thank you.